I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and today I'm going to show you how to install a Tusk UTV Stage 3 upgrade kit on your Can Am Maverick X3 XRC. Now, these kits are one of the easiest ways to get some of the most popular accessories installed on your brand new XRC. So, what this kit includes is your removable half windshield, your pivot folding mirrors with a pillar mounts, the polycarb rear window. You've got a cargo barricade in the back. You're also gonna be getting some lights. So in the front, you have the 12 inch shock tower LED light bar kit. And in the back, you've got the four foot LED dual lighted whip kit with the adjustable mounts. Now all of this stuff is easy to install. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start out with the polycarb rear window. We've laid out a blanket so this doesn't get scratched and I'm wearing rubber gloves so I don't get my fingerprints all over it. So all we need to do to prep this is remove the protective coating from both sides. Over at the machine, we're gonna apply the foam tape across the larger roll cage tube. And if you have any extra, you can trim it off. Now we can set the rear window in place. Now we're gonna take the eight hook and loop straps and we're just gonna loosely install them through each slot and around the roll cage. And then once you have all of those installed, you can go back through and make your adjustments and tighten those straps down. Moving on to the half windshield, again, I have my rubber gloves to keep my fingerprints off. Then we're gonna remove the protective film from both sides. Next, we're gonna lay the windshield so the bend at the top is facing away from us. And then we're gonna take the foam tape and we're gonna go around the sides and bottom with this. And just make sure you cut out the sections next to those two lower mounting locations. Now over at the machine, at the very front, you're gonna notice that there's a couple dimples. What we need to do is drill out the outermost dimple on the left and the right side. And to do that, what we're gonna do is remove these three bolts and you've got two push rivets we're gonna take out as well. We're gonna drill out the outer dimple on each side of the machine. We're gonna use an 11 30 seconds inch drill bit. Flex the dash, install the J-nut, and then reinstall your hardware and you can do the same steps on the other side. Now we can set the half windshield in place. Now we can wrap the Velcro clamps around the roll cage through the slot in the half windshield. And we'll go behind the bar on the clamp, wrap that around and back through the windshield. And we're gonna leave that just a little loose. That way we can line up our mounting knob with that J-nut. We're gonna screw that in place. We're gonna leave it loose enough. We can make more adjustments. We'll do the same thing on the other side, make our final adjustments. Then we'll tighten the clamps down and snug up the knobs. Now for the mirror mounts, we're gonna start on the driver's side and the driver mirror mount is different than the passenger. So the passenger has this curve in it and it's gonna curve out away from the machine. So be aware of that. But to set this in place, all you're gonna do is take your M6 by 60 millimeter bolts, go through the bracket, through the hole in the frame. And then you're gonna follow that up with a flat washer on the backside and a nylock nut. Now to install the mirrors, make sure the logo is in the correct orientation. You're gonna remove this bolt. We're gonna use a 13 millimeter combo on that. And uh, there's a little star washer behind it. Don't lose that. Stick the bolt through that bracket, install the star washer, and then thread the bolt into the mirror. Then you're gonna adjust everything where you want it and tighten it down. And you can do the same steps on the other side.
To prep the cargo barricade, what you're gonna do first is install the trim across this top edge. Now with this, if it fits loose at any point, you can simply pinch this together and press it back on for a tighter fit. Next, we need to install the left and right brackets. So how you tell you have the right one in the correct spot is the wider slots, those are gonna go against the barricade and the slant is gonna face down and towards the back of the barricade. You're just gonna use two of the M6 by 16 button head bolts. We'll go through the barricade, through that bracket, and then we've got a nylock nut on the front side. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Then we're gonna leave the hardware just loose enough that you can make adjustments with the bracket still. To install the cargo barricade, we need to remove five bolts from the rear shroud. These are gonna take a T30 Torx bit. Then we've got two more bolts on top we're gonna to remove. We're gonna start with this inside the bed. We're gonna work it out. That's the only way it's gonna sit in there. And then we're gonna use the two bolts that we just removed to install the cargo barricade. Then we're gonna loosely tighten those bolts where you can barely move it around for adjustment still. And then once you have the brackets flush against the bed, we're gonna tighten down all of the hardware we have installed so far. After that, you wanna use a Sharpie to mark both of the mounting locations inside the slots on the brackets. We need to remove the cargo barricade. After that, you wanna remove both taillights using a T30 and T15 Torx bit and make sure you get that electrical connector unplugged. Now we can use the supplied drill bit to drill the center of all four markings. Now we need to reinstall the cargo barricade to the point we previously had it. Then we'll take the M6 by 16 millimeter button head bolts. We're gonna go from inside the bed through our mounting bracket. And then on the back side, we're gonna have a washer and a nylock nut. And once you have all four of those installed, you can go through and tighten down all of the hardware. Now you can reinstall the tail lights and the rear shroud. To get the light bar installed, we need to remove a few items. So we're back here by the seat belts on the passenger side. We need to remove both of these upper straps. We're gonna use an 18 millimeter socket to remove those nuts. Next, we need to slide the seat back so the two slots in the seat line up with the two mounting holes in the back. And we're gonna use an 18 millimeter socket to remove both of those nuts. Then in the front, we're using a 13 millimeter socket and combo wrench to remove both of these bolts. Now that we have all the hardware out, we can go ahead and remove the seat. Next, we need to gain access to our bus bar. So we need to remove both of these panels and they're held into place by clips. So we've got a clip, couple of clips on here that make it so we just need to pull straight out on this and those clips should break free. Next, we need to remove this plastic piece on the center console. So we're gonna need a T30 Torx bit and some trim clip pliers. Next, we're gonna remove the plug so we can install our rocker switch. So you're gonna have two tabs on the backside to squeeze those and push this out. 
We're going to disconnect the negative terminal on our battery. Now we're gonna remove the hood. This just pops right off. Next, we'll use both of these bolts to attach our light bar mount. So we're gonna remove these with a 10 millimeter socket and wrench. Now our kit came with a spacer and a washer. And for this particular machine, we're actually not gonna use a spacer. We're actually just going to use this washer and we're doubling it up with the washer off this bolt. If we don't do it this way, the bolt isn't gonna be long enough. So what we're gonna do, set the bolt through the bracket. We've got both the spacers in the grommets. Go through both washers and then we're gonna install the nylock nut on the back side. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. And you just wanna center up the bracket and tighten the hardware down. So your light bar is gonna come with several different brackets, but these L brackets are what you're gonna use. So we have this rubber pad, gonna lay that on the back side, and then we're gonna take the M6 by 25 millimeter bolt. Then we've got the M6 lock washer and nut on the back side. Gonna thread that on and then do the same thing on the other side. You wanna square these up and then we're gonna tighten this hardware down. Then to install the light bar, we're using the two M8 by 16 millimeter bolts go in the side of the L brackets. And then once you have these installed, you can adjust everything for optimal fitment and then tighten everything down. Now to wire everything up, it's actually pretty simple. You've got two wiring harnesses and you actually do not need this extra length of wire in the second harness. So you've got your switch. We're gonna replace that with a rocker, but we're gonna do that later. This obviously connects into your light bar. You've got a relay and these wires go to battery power. Now, since we're gonna run our switch to key on power, we are gonna use this extra length of wire and we're gonna show you how to connect that in a minute. But the first thing we need to do, we're gonna start by that bus bar and then we need to run this wire through our firewall, there's a grommet. We're gonna poke this through and route it up to the light bar. Okay, so we're back by the bus bar. We're starting with most of the harness back here and then this connector going to the light bar, we're gonna start running this up along the existing wiring harness. And at the same time, we're gonna route the wires for our rocker switch. And I'm gonna pull off the old rocker switch right now. And then uh, this is where these two wires part ways. So I'm just gonna stick the light bar wire into the other side of the cab. And then the rocker switch wires, we're gonna route right through our new mounting location. So on the driver's side, we're taking this plug. We're gonna run this up by the wires going through the dash. And we're gonna route it through that grommet. And we'll go through that center diamond right underneath the upper shock mount. And then we're gonna disconnect this small lead from the light bar and connect the light bar into our wiring harness. Just make sure it's locked all the way in. And then we have all this extra slack so we can take that back out and pull this wire back towards that bus bar. So in the middle we have a constant power. So we're gonna hook the red wire here and the black wire to the ground, which is on top. So the next thing we need to do is splice in our key on power harness. And this is only gonna fit on one way. And the whole point of running this is just so if you accidentally leave your light bar switch on, when you turn the key off, you're not gonna keep draining power and run your battery dead. So from that harness, the white wire isn't going anywhere. And that's what you're gonna hook into the key on power right here. We need to attach an electrical eyelet to that. So I'm just gonna crimp that on. And we can reconnect our negative terminal. Then we'll turn the key on and test our light. So now that we've verified that everything works, we're gonna go back through and tie down all of our wiring and press the switch back into place. Yeah. 
And now we can reinstall our covers. Then we can install the seat and mounting hardware and tighten all of it down. And then the hood. Next step, we need to cut off this heat shrink tubing. Now you can see the colors of the wires. So this middle terminal, that's your number two terminal. You're going to install the white wire on there and it should actually clip into place. On the bottom, you've got the number three terminal. You're gonna hook your blue wire into that. And then on top, you've got the black wire. That's gonna be the number eight terminal. So that's the standard way to wire up this rocker switch. But if you wanna take advantage of the LED for the LED light bar words, what you can do is splice in to the wires you already have. So you're gonna splice one wire into the white key on power and then one wire into your ground. And then you're just gonna run those. So we're basically connecting terminal eight to terminal seven right at the top. So those are both ground. And then terminal two, again, that's our key on power. We're gonna cross that over to number six as well. And that way we're gonna have this LED on all the time with the key on. And then when the light bar's on, it's gonna give you that indication up here. So I'm gonna trim back that cover a little bit so we can access these wires. So we've got a couple inches of black wire and our wire tap to tap into this location. And once you're tapped into that wire, you just wanna attach a spade connector to the end. And we'll do the same thing with the white wire. Then once you have your wires attached, you can go ahead and reconnect these to your switch. So again, we have the white wire going to number two. That's clipped in. The blue wire is going on the bottom to number three. Black wire to number eight on top. The one we spliced from the white wire. So in our case, that's a red wire. In the number six spot, and then our other black wire is going to number seven. And before I press this in, I'm just gonna verify everything works. So that just lit up. Top one's lit up with this on. So we know we're good. Moving on, we're gonna install our lighted whips. So to get these set up, we need to install the mounts. Use your four millimeter Allen to remove the screws on the backside of the clamp. And we'll install this onto the roll cage. So next, I'm gonna level this mount up. You can leave it facing towards the rear of the machine. It's up to you. And again, we're just using the four millimeter Allen to do this. We'll remove the two bolts. I'm not gonna to touch the middle bolt. And this should just rotate. So we've got that leveled up right there. Reinstall the bolts and tighten them down. And then we'll do those same steps on the other side. Now we need to install the flag mounts on both sides. And I'm applying some anti-seize to these mounts since they're dissimilar metals. So if you have a 26 millimeter wrench, that's gonna work great on this, but for everyone else, you can use a crescent wrench and a 19 millimeter socket. Now, before we do the final tightening on the clamp, what we need to do is slide this up right against the mount for the shock reservoir. Okay, so that's all the way up. There is one more adjustment we're gonna to have to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach the flags and then we're gonna make sure they're straight up and down. Once they are, we can go ahead and tighten down the clamp on the back side. Now for the wiring, both of the flags, they're gonna come with a little wire harness attached to the flag. We're gonna disconnect both of them. We're only gonna use one of these wiring sections 
So that's gonna be on the driver's side for us. And then the other side, we're just gonna remove it. Next, we need a power source for our lighted whips. A common place to get that is from the tail lights. So we're gonna disconnect our driver's side tail light connection. So on this connector, you have three different colors. You've got a white with a red tracer. That's gonna be your brake lights. You've got a purple with white tracer. That's a key on power. And we're actually gonna tie into that. And then you've got a black wire. That's gonna be your ground. So you can see somebody's already tied into this and that's to run the license plate light. So we're gonna remove some of this. And then again, we're tying into the purple wire. That's where we're getting our power from. And then the black one, we're gonna splice into that for our ground. And if you have any questions or aren't sure on your machine, you can verify all of that information with a test light. So now that we've exposed these wires, we're gonna take our wire taps, clip those onto the wire we're tapping into. Now with the harness, we're gonna use the side with the two exposed ends already. And we're going red to red, black to black. So we've got our wire all the way in there, bottomed out, the tab is all the way down. And now we're just gonna snap the cover into place and do the same thing for the ground wire. And then from here, I'm gonna reconnect the tail light. And I'm gonna wrap the wire across the back of the frame. And we've got a little opening by the plastics just to the left of the shock. We're gonna come up through there right next to the lighted whip. So next we need to attach the power wire to our Y splitter. Just make sure you have the O-rings in place as you attach everything. So we have our power wire hooked up. This, the next wire will attach to the flag. And then this long section from the Y splitter, we're gonna run that over to the other flag then we can connect it to the other flag. And before we tie anything down, we're actually gonna turn the key on and make sure that these lighted whips work. Now to use these lighted whips, you're gonna need this remote. So we're gonna pull the plastic tab so the remote works. And then if this is ever unpaired from these whips, to repair this, all you have to do is hold the green button down. So you saw the whips, they flashed three times and then went solid. We know we're paired. So from here, you can adjust the whips to whatever color you want or whatever mode. There's a lot of different features with this. Now that we've verified that everything works, we're gonna go back through and tie down all of the wiring. And that's it for the Tusk UTV Stage 3 upgrade kit on your Can-Am Maverick X3 XRC. If you have any questions about the install process, leave those down in the comments below. And if you need one of these kits, they qualify for free shipping, so go pick one up on our website. And if you wanna see more helpful content like this, subscribe to our channel. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Thanks for watching.